So, can you tell me a couple of words about yourself in context of Gurdjieff moment? When I <coughs> graduated from college long time ago, I met with a friend who was interested in philosophy and poetry, and he told me he was friends with a woman, who, a young woman, whose mother had worked with this man called Gurdjieff. And he started to tell me about it. He showed me a book. And I went away, left. We, I went some down to visit my family in Florida. I took one of the Gurdjieff books with me. And I started to read it. I was 21 years old. And at first I thought, it's hard to accept anything in this book. It was so unusual, and I had come out of a very good college majoring in philosophy. And this was unlike anything I had ever encountered, and I couldn't really accept it. Quite the contrary. <laughs> then I kept on reading, and suddenly I began to feel this man who was speaking, who was called G in the book. His book was In Search of the Miraculous. I felt there was something in him, in the way he spoke, in the way he thought, in something between the lines. There was something that I could only call, he spoke in a very ancient traditional phrase, he spoke as one having authority not authority based on anything uh, institutional or for, uh, formal. Uh, much of what he said was still strange to me, still uh, unacceptable, but there was authority in his words. There was authority in the life, in the, in, in the sequence of thought, in the presence. I had never experienced reading someone who had the kind of authority that was not institutional of any kind, just by what I later began to feel was what we call being. And the more I read, the more I was attracted by the presence that was in between the words, that was in the, in the, in the man, in, in this book, in the sequence of ideas, in the, the, the precision even when the most uh, unacceptable sounding or unusual ideas that my philosophically trained mind would reject and argue against, and, but it just kept on compelling me. Finally, I, I said to my friend up in New York, uh, I, I spoke to the, he, his, his friend, was the daughter of this woman that was with Gurdjieff, and I wanted to go and meet the person who had been in person with this man, Gurdjieff. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a letter to this woman, who was a pupil of Gurdjieff, had been, and she invited me to come to meet with her. And when I met with her in New York, she had a kind of presence also, but it was a little different quality, a little different level. But with no, no doubt, this was an, a, a special kind of person who conducted, who emanated a special kind of force, which I found very interesting. Nothing compelling, nothing uh, suggesting that I believe something or that I'm, nothing forced upon me, nothing pretentious, just a quality of life in this person. And uh, that was my beginning of the Gurdjieff work, Gurdjieff teaching 
which mm -hmm. I stayed with for a while and uh, went away for, for a while, then came to live in San Francisco as a professor in San Francisco State University in philosophy, and found that there was a Goethe group in San Francisco. I thought this was had been an unusual man, very powerful, but that was in the past. But there it was here. So I got in touch with the people here who were pupils of Gurdjieff's teaching, found them very interesting, very impressive, met with one of the leading people here in this community, found an extraordinary level of honesty that I never thought I would meet. With whom? Huh? Who, from whom? It's from the man who was one of the leaders of the work here. What, what's the name of his name? I did not okay. say. Mm. <clears throat> <clears throat> and, but there was an extraordinary level of honesty. And this, that and the other thing, I met finally the man from, who was a direct pupil of Gurdjieff. And, um, I was doubly impressed by him and drawn to him. And that was the beginning. Mm -hmm. I've left out a lot of the most important things, mm -hmm. but that was something of what... Uh, was. Maybe you will tell it to us in Russian house. Maybe. And tell me how the Gurdjieff work influenced on your philosophy. It on your me. philosophical uh, things. The quality, <coughs> not an intellectual quality, as I was familiar with it, but something else helped me to keep a distance between academic work, which I was doing as best I can, like an academician, and this search, the inward search of who mm -hmm. and what I am, what we human beings are. And I soon discovered that philosophy was very good, very interesting, very important, but it was basically about ideas, and great ideas even. But that I found that the Gurdjieff work was about energy that I had no idea about up till then, the human energy. So there was no comparison between philosophy as such and Gurdjieff teaching, which was about mainly about energy. And I can't say much, much more about that now. We'd have to talk about uh, energy that we're mostly, we have a little bit in our lives, but we have no idea about how much and what quality of energy is possible in our inner life, in our inner being. Mm -hmm. This was completely new and I was, I was feeling it, perceiving it, <clears throat> but I didn't know the name of it. I didn't see the connection very right away with academic. On the contrary, I tried to keep both these two things as separate as possible and not really uh, merge academic work mm -hmm. with what we, what we came to call work on oneself. Mm -hmm. Later on, I was able to make a, try to make a bridge between great questions of philosophy Mm -hmm. and the responses to them in the Gurdjieff teaching, which were completely unexpected and completely, completely powerful and beautiful at the same time. Mm 